Hello friends, my name is Theo, and today in this exciting Meissner Media tutorial, we're going to be taking a look at how to do a simple sky replacement inside of DaVinci Resolve. Now, disclaimer, you should not be doing sky replacements in DaVinci Resolve. Use an actual compositor like After Effects or Fusion for this. But, since I like DaVinci Resolve party tricks, and maybe one of these days you'll need this, we are going to do it in Resolve. So, let's import some footage, because this is where it all starts. So, I've got this will be the footage that we need to replace this guy in looks fine and then here is uh the darker footage we'll be replacing the sky with so it's sort of like a fake hdr also maybe we'll put that in the title as like a clickbaity thing fake hdr slash sky replacement so we don't just import our sky that we're going to replace as normal footage oh no you have to do a special thing go right click add to media pool as a mat i'm not going to go into what this does just know it lets us use this footage inside of our node graph like a second source of footage. If you're recording on a red camera and you're doing the HDRX function, then like you can actually do special other things that are fancy. But uh, I don't have any HDRX footage on me right now, I don't think, or at least none that is interesting. So we're going to do it this way because more people have literally any other camera in the world than that. So now on our edit page, we're going to go and we're going to select what part we want. That's pretty cool. Look how cool I look. Oh, geez. Yeah. Freaking cold cold killer right there okay so now here comes the interesting part we're gonna get right into this so in order to add our sky footage in so we can use it because if you just add it in our timeline like this the keys won't go through you have to do it in here as far as i know i could be wrong let me know in the comments below if i'm wrong as i am one to be so we're gonna right click on our node go to add mat timeline mat and we've got this guy right here now we're gonna go ahead and delete this connection because we just want this as footage so Quick add another node after that just so we have something to work with. Then add node layer mixer. Now this part is also important. We're going to put our footage that we're going to be hitting this guy out of on the bottom and our sky footage on the top because DaVinci Resolve is sort of backwards, at least in my mind, layer wise. And your, your footage stacks from top to bottom. So this will be our background layer and this will be our foreground layer. So now we'll connect this up and see, boom, nothing happens because we got to go take a key from this guy. So, so just to sort of get things started, I'm going to do a quick little grade on this, getting it about where we want it to be. Cool. We'll call that good for now. Alt S because why not? They're going to go to our qualifier tab and select the sky and whoa, look at this. This is pretty cool on its own, right? But it's backwards. Okay. So just flip our selection there and look, look how bad this looks, but we're getting close. So in order to clean up this edge, we've got to go down to these little controls down here. So start with blur radius, get something that feels kind of good. And you can all, you know, push and pull these things in out ratio, bring this in some clean white, clean black. And now it's not perfect. You see, you've got some garbage over here. You're kind of getting a lot of, a little more light wrap than we would want around our subject, but you know, for quick and dirty, that's not bad. You know, you can always finick around with this as much as you want. And another thing to do is it'll often help sell your look a little better if you try and match your clips a little better. So right now this clip is way darker than this clip. So if we brighten up this clip a little bit so it matches a little bit better, you can see it looks less fake. And some of our artifacts go away. And then you can bring it back down again another one of these guys. So I'll go to curves for here because we don't have to use curves in this channel. So there we go. There's that. And then if you want to go ahead and make it look however you want to, you can put your standard little this guy on here. And high range. This isn't mandatory. This is just me making a good thumbnail for the video mostly to make people click on it because, you know, hashtag selling out. Am I right? So while I'm doing this story time, so I was going to originally film this footage for a different tutorial, which I will end up making down the line. But I got up to the top of this parking garage and I was like, hey, we can do an HDR thing too. I've been wanting to do that. So I went ahead and filmed it real quick. It went good. It was easy. Uh, right after an excellent meal at Jason's Deli, hashtag not sponsored. And then on my way down, I took the elevator because why not? And something I didn't tell you about this parking garage is it may or may not be still under construction slash open to the public. So I said, why not? So I took the elevator from floor six because floor seven would close and you could just get up. Floor six down to the ground floor. 
I got to the bottom and the doors didn't open. And I was stuck in the elevator for about probably four or five minutes. It obviously felt a lot longer than that. But I was stuck in that elevator for a while. And that was pretty wild. That was a pretty wild experience. Whoa, cool. We're just playing around now. I'm wasting time. All right. I don't have any more stories besides getting stuck in the elevator. Um, but it still could look better. Gosh darn it, Theo. Gosh darn it. You can leave now if you want. Uh, like the video if you liked it. Dislike if you dislike it. Leave your feelings down in the comments below, no matter what. Have you ever been stuck in an elevator before? It's pretty weird. Also be sure to, also be sure to share this video with your friends um, because sky replacement is cool. Once again, do not do this inside of DaVinci Resolve. Do it inside of an actual compositor because as you can see, our little edges are not, not the best. There we go. That looks pretty good. Uh, here we're just adding in some vignette action. Oh, going to do a cool thing here. So this part of the frame is already dark enough. And I could just use, you know, a linear guy to go on the top. But I still want it to be like rounded. So I'm not going to do that. Instead, what I'm going to do to cut off this bottom part is I'm going to add a mask. So what, what? I believe it's this button. Yeah. So you can see, now I can cut off the bottom of this qualifier with another qualifier. So look at that. That's pretty cool. Thanks for sticking around. Also, be sure to go to meesnamedia.com slash products. You can check out the House Lutz pack, the Bright Light Sight Leak pack, which would look really good on this footage, I'm sure. And the Carnival Power Grades, which are also pretty cool. Oh, another thing. Can you tell that I haven't really prepared for this tutorial? Another thing is your matte footage, it will automatically repeat itself over and over and over again. So it's probably a good idea to just create a still frame from it or make sure that your matte clip footage is long enough. Also, since, you know, there's probably a way to track it. I'll have to do that. If there is, I'll make a, another tutorial about it. But make sure that both your shots are locked off. And in this case, you know, obviously exactly the same. Um, but you can do this with any other sky footage you want to put behind there if you want. It's just a little bit trickier. So let's see how this is looking. I um, also want to bump this guy up. So yeah, if you see before and after, you know, people are going to pay more for this than they are for this. At least I think. Also, real quick, just because since you're obviously still hanging around while I'm rambling, you should have left a long time ago. But since you haven't left a long time ago, Oh, actually, I can do this. No, I can't do it like that. Uh, trying to think of any other stories. None really. I'm not really, not really a big story guy. I know, Theo, you're a filmmaker. Why don't, why don't you have stories? Well, cause I know, I know the buttons. That's my thing. Oh, whoops. I gotta invert this. There we go. There we go. And now that looks less bad. Sweet. So that looks like any sort of gritty sci-fi movie out there. And it was shot in like a minute on a Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera with the Metabone Speed Booster and a Tamron 24 to 70. Um, I think it was the F5.6 or so. It's a 24 millimeters. Uh, yeah. Once again, I'm with you with Mr. Media. I have a great day and I will see you next time. Bye.